Well then, Hazel, you and I know each other through the internet. Yes. Like a lot of people these days. It's a funny place, the internet. You meet dozens and dozens of people and you don't know what they're like, really. And uh, you're pro-independence for Scotland, slightly. Uh, ever so slightly and have been since a, a young teenager. I have been since about the age of 13 or 14. I've been a, a pro-independence supporter. Okay. And uh, you managed to make it to the last week's March and Rally. What did you think? It, it was the most fantastic day. The weather was perfect. Uh, the crowd was amazing. I was so pleased and happy to see so many families there. Everybody from babies all the way up. Loads of kids, weren't oh, that was amazing. And out walking their dogs as well. I, I thought it was just heartening to know that families are being included in the, the the politics because I think you have to do that. It was. It wasn't like a march. It, political march I've ever been on. I've been going to marches for 30 no, it, years. It was, it was unique. It was. It had a, a really sort of festive party atmosphere. I think it's because it was, there were so many children there. Well, there were a lot of inexperienced marchers as well. Yeah. I mean, there was, I, I wasn't aware of anybody shouting, you know, chanting or banging drums or blowing whistles. Or you, you had to be back the crowd for that, for the Flanders crowd. They were quite vociferous. Okay. And... Um, so I was behind them to start with, but I wanted to get further up and see see what was ahead of me and see how far the, the, the parade went. And I was, I, I can't remember the name of the street, but I was amazed we filled this street. That's could, George Fourth Bridge, you could yeah, see it And I could end. see it curling down, I and I knew there was still crowds oh, yeah. well, behind I, me. It was about five or six times longer than that. It was stunning. I, it was just... Because I was terrified. I was, when, I, when I was going, I thought, what if there's only 12 of us there? It's only my Facebook pals that are there, and when I saw the crowd start to build and build, I felt I felt for it. Uh, well, the usual terrific. suspects weren't there. In other words, the SWP and uh, mm. all the trots that uh, yeah. I see around. Sometimes I don't always go on a march mm -hmm. as part of it. Sometimes I go to report on it. Yes, yes. Um, so, no, it was. Uh, oh, that was fascinating. So you've been back. In yeah. Scotland for a couple of weeks or yes. thereabouts. What do you think about? Do you, feel, do you get any sense of what it's, what's happening politically? Um, I'm not really mixing with people other than than the family who are all fairly pro independence. Um, so I'm not really getting a feel from outsiders at the moment. What the the uh, how so what feel. struck you? I mean, apart apart from your personal experience on a day to day basis, there's been issues. As, Big speech last week for Joanne Lamont. I mean, that oh, was a turning point. Really? Was that was that not a turning point? What the <laughs> the lack of the, the end of social democracy, perhaps? Oh, the the absolute crucifixion of social social democracy on the the Labour Party's own private cross of torture. They really are. I, I do not know. Why do you think she did, made that speech? I think she made that speech because. Um, she was told, to be honest. I have a feeling that if if Scotland votes no in 2014, I think it's going to be a disaster of, oh, a colossal disaster for Scotland. Because that, to me, was a, an indication of what's to come, more like England. Hmm. That set up the backdoor privatisation of all the, the social support that we take for granted in Scotland. Really, people people think, they don't think twice about going to the doctor and getting their free prescriptions now. Whereas in in England, it's all backdoor uh, privatisation, and I think that's what that speech was all about. This is what it's something for nothing was the the. That was the phrase that crucified. Crucifi well, but that's the phrase that, cru that she used that apparently crucified her. My mother's 78, and she has paid taxes all her working life, right. and now she's reaping the, the benefit of those taxes that she paid. Right. And why shouldn't she? Absolutely. Why shouldn't she? And it's not for nothing. She worked hard for that. Well, Joanne seemed to repeat that speech at uh, Manchester a couple of days ago. Um. <laughs> And uh, there's been a lot of Tories and Tory supporters mm -hmm. wel welcoming him. I mean, the first person to tweet about it her was Murdo Fraser of the 
Conservatives. And then, of, of all the commentators, it was, Al well, there's two, Alex Massey and um, David Torrance, were both very pro Conservative. Yes. They thought it was a great speech as well. But. Well, doesn't that just frighten your welly boots off? It really does when the when the Tories are coming out in support of what uh, the Scottish Labour Party are saying, which is actually just parroting what Miliband is saying, really. It's not been a good week for Scottish Labour, I don't think. I don't think so. It's, it really is a, a suicide note. I don't know. Well, what worries me is that Folks may not pay attention to this and just carry on as before, but I've seen a lot of tweets that basically said 60 years going labour, no more. Oh, well, I'll give you a wee secret. I just real kind of virtually made up my mind last night that I'm going to get more involved with labour for independence. Yes. Because it turns out that for various reasons, I've actually voted labour quite a lot recently for various reasons. Mm -hmm. for personal reasons, I know the people. and. I was very impressed by that Alan Grogan. Absolutely impressed. And I don't think um, Labour Party can be changed from the outside. It has to come from within. It has to come from their heart and work its way through because you can you can bash something from the outside until you're blue in the face and never actually penetrate or make an impression. But it's, 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 if it's going to come from the inside and people talking amongst each other and actually admitting that this is not what socialism, social democracy is to me. It's more in line with what the SNP are doing, but that Alex Salmon's a scary man. And, and I don't know why they find that about him. But I anyway. thought Nicola was particularly good at, at, at FMQs last week. Yes. Oh yes she, I mean, she really just... She too is in a league of her own when she stands up and speaks in mm -hmm. public. She doesn't need a brief. She doesn't, she's, she's well enough briefed yes. to handle any subject. I mean... Uh, the old thing about the, the SNP being a one-man band is absolute twaddle, really, because I think they've got a lot coming up behind them. Um, uh, well, Salmon could fall under a bus and there would be Nicola. Nicola yeah. could go under a bus, you'd Mike Russell. Mike Russell could go, you, well... Humza Yousaf, I think he's got a lot of... Humza Yousaf, yeah. I think he's got a lot of potential. Yeah. I've seen him on the various political programmes and he keeps a good grip on himself and he gets his points over and I, I think he's I think he's got really strong potential. And he's right in the middle of all the youth part of what's absolutely, happening. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And not unconnected either, given, I won't go into the details, but certainly, you know, in touch with other parties, shall we say, through yeah. various aspects yes. of what's going on. Absolutely. So, no, that's, that's fantastic. Well, look, thank you very much, Heather. Was there any Hazel? <laughs> That's all right. It's me that's got the senior moment. It's not your problem. No, that's all right. It's funny, though, because when people do get the name mixed up, it's always Heather. Is that right? Always. And my niece, who's called Heather, always gets Hazel. Oh, well, that, that, no, that's a, I have that family problem. I can't even talk. But I think we'll save it for later. Thank you very much, Hazel Lurie. Thank you very much, And indeed. it's been it's very nice to meet the Ouija war Warbler here at the... And do you want to know how I get called Ouija Warbler? All oh, right, all right. Well... I come from the West Coast. I, I only ever worked in Glasgow. I never, well, I actually stayed in nurses' homes and things like that. But apparently, I didn't find this out until I went to the East Coast, that everybody from the West Coast is basically a Ouija. Oh, well, now there's another story. Uh -huh. And when I went uh, over to the States and uh, with, uh, to meet, be with my husband, um, he called me the Ouija because he's actually originally from the Northwest. Yeah, yeah. So he calls me the Ouija, and because I could sing, Ouija warbler. Ouija warbler. There you go. Huh? There you go. Very pleased to meet another Ouija. I'm a Ouija, you know. Yeah. Thanks very much, Hazel.